Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Techy Blossom. In this video I will be teaching you to create a hexagon shape and animate it which I came across while playing FIFA. This particular hexagon shape is very popular in soccer where a player has six major attributes: pace, shooting, passing, dribbling, defending and physicality. We can visually compare two players stats and find which one is better in each in any way. So what we should do to create this widget using Flutter? Let's see that in this video. There are majorly five parts to this video. First, we will create multiple hexagons. Then we will create labels around hexagon vertices. Then we will create a polygon with player stats. Fourth, we will create another polygon with second player stats. And lastly, we will animate the polygon from zero to the final value. I have put a lot of effort in teaching this so make sure to watch this video till end also it motivates me more when i see rise in my subscribers count so do subscribe this channel so let's start by creating the outermost hexagon first we should first know how a hexagon is created one way of creating a hexagon is to create it from a circle so draw a radius from center along x axis take any point on circle say this point is 30 degrees to the bottom of the radius the next point would be 60 degrees further from 30 degree line in the clockwise direction now repeat this further in the clockwise direction four times more so you will have total of six points now now join these six points the red lines form a hexagon and for clarity i will remove the unwanted lines now that we know how a hexagon is created using angles we know that we need a radius and some angles So let's see how we can create hexagon in Flutter. So we have a app here with hexagon screen. So let's create hexagon widget and pass in the screen width to it. We will use screen width to initialize radius. We will also need diameter. So we will first initialize diameter by subtracting 100 from screen width and you know radius is half of the diameter. We will use a stack here as we need to later add more widgets here. We will use custom paint to create hexagon shape. So pass in the radius to it. Extend the hexagon painter with custom painter and override the two methods. We are going to use paint method here. Declare a paint here. This paint will define the stroke cap, style, color, width of hexagon lines. Next, we will have to find center of the circle. That would be width by 2 for x and y. Now using canvas we can draw a line using draw line function to draw a line we need a starting point and an end point so we need two offsets here how do we find these points we have center offset and radius and also we know about our first angle we have to go back to our school days to remember how we can use these three values to find a point on circle at some angle so referring back our hexagon let's plot a rough center and radius Let's mark the first point of hexagon that is at 30 degrees to the bottom of radius line. We need to find this x and y. If you closely look at the shape, it is a right angled triangle where opposite side of 30 degree angle is y and adjacent side is x. So we can use cos theta and sin theta here. The cos theta equation is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. In our case, adjacent side is x and hypotenuse is radius. because we know theta and radius we can easily find x here so x is the radius multiplied by cos theta similarly we can use sin theta to find opposite side that is y so y is radius multiplied by sin theta but wait this is just one point and we need two points to draw a line so here for our first point we will use theta as 30 degrees in the code we will create our first offset now i want to give some more context to radian and degree when we talk about math library in dart so one radian is roughly 57.2958 degrees the cos and sin functions from the math library accepts angles in radians and not degrees and it can become complex and unreadable for anyone to understand so we will not convert 30 degrees to radians instead we can also do pi multiplied by 2 into our degree divide by 360 that is 2 pi theta by 360 this way you keep the 30 degree readable in your formula other way would be to use cos 0.5236 this 0.5236 is 
30 degrees converted to 0.5236 radian. This looks lesser code, but doesn't give your code developers an idea of why is this value used. I limited this number to 4 decimals, but if we use the full form, there are 16 decimal values and that is a truncated value as we are calculating with the help of pi. I have given both the ways to you to decide which one to choose. It's up to you. Okay, let's carry on. So we have got our first point with 30 degrees. Now we need our second point with 30 plus 60, that is 90 degrees. It's simple. Duplicate the lines and change the angle to 90 degrees. Let's run this and see our first line. Great, we have our first line. But wait, why it is not in center? The offset in Flutter starts from top left corner, so it has placed our offsets with respect to that. Remember, we calculate the center, but never used it. We will need to add centers X and Y to our points X and Y. Now when you run it, you will see the line at the right place. For the second line, we need second point and third point. The third point will be 150 degrees, 60 added to 90 degrees. And now you have two lines, so our hexagon is 33% complete. Let's do it more smartly using a loop, but how? We can find a relation with all the angles of which we need offsets. First angle is 30 degrees, let's say 1 multiplied to 30. Second is 90, that is 3 multiplied to 30. And third is 150, that is 5 multiplied to 30. And the series goes on for 6 points. So our final values will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Stop at 11 because we need only 6 values. We have 6 vertices for hexagon. Let's run a loop on these angle multipliers. We will multiply the first placed multiplier with 30 for first point and take the second placed multiplier for second point to form a line. Let's run it. We fall into an error here. Why? Because once we reach the end of multipliers, we are trying to access i plus 1. So to overcome this, we will add 1 at the end of multipliers because 1 is the 30 degree. But keep the loop to run only till i less than 6. Now when you run, you see a complete hexagon. And that was great. Most of the concepts are now in front of you and we will use these to further draw other hexagon lines and actual values of player. So to draw 4 inner rings of this hexagon, we need to reduce the radius fractionally. So let's wrap the initial for loop in another for loop that would run from 1 to 5 inclusive. And this j value we can use to multiply to radius by fraction. So for the first iteration, it would be 1 fifth of radius. That means the innermost ring. Second iteration, it would be 2 fifths of radius. That is second innermost ring. And so on. Until 5 out of 5 of radius. That is the radius itself, which we had earlier as the outer hexagon. So that is how you can have multiple hexagons. Our rating base is ready without labels. Let's add labels to it. The labels consist of name and value of rating. So let's first define a class to hold rating and create a mock data for player. Let's create a labels widget and supply radius, size and ratings to it. In the build function, we will again calculate the center in the same manner as before. Similar to how we plotted 6 points with 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 150 degrees and so on, we will use 6 position dot from rect widgets in the stack, where our offset will be decided in the same way as we found our points. So let's keep the width 100 and height 40 here. These are mandatory attributes that help in finding exact position of the widget in the stack. As a child, we will have column with two text, one for name and other for value. Since we have taken 100 width, we also need to shift our center by 50 as that's the center of our child widget. Let's repeat this for 5 other values and run the app. Now we have all the labels visible but they are slightly off position because they have some width and height. To align them properly, we will have to add some points to either x or y coordinates but for consistency, we will keep that extra value as a constant one. 
like 30 in this case. For two right side points, we will add 30 to x coordinate. For the bottom point, we will add 30 to the y coordinate. For the two left side points, we can subtract 30 from x coordinate and for the topmost point, we can subtract 30 from y coordinate so that it moves little up. Now we will have all of them perfectly and consistently positioned from our hexagon. Now it's time to plot player hexagon with stats. The player hexagon is little different from the base hexagon. Can you guess the difference? The main difference is that it is filled with a color. It's not just a shape on canvas, but it's a shape which is filled with color. And to achieve this, we need to clip a widget that is a square. So first, let's put that square in place and then we will think of clipping it. I am using a sized box with size as a diameter or you can say size. Also give it a color by using colored box. We can see a rectangle on top of base hexagon. Don't worry about that it is taking all the full screen height. It is because we had used we have used stackfit.expand to bring everything in center for this video. The important thing would be now to clip this widget. So let's wrap sized box with clip path and provide a clipper, hexagon clipper. Each stat can be different. So we need to pass in the value multipliers to this clipper. This is again same as we did with the inner hexagons where we multiplied J with the radius to get fraction of the radius. Here as well, if a player stat is 100, we have to multiply 1 to radius. If it is 80, we need to multiply 80 by 100. That's it. That is 0.4 into radius. You will better understand when we code for that. But for now, just pass in a list of double values. Each of these values belong to one stat starting from pace. Our multipliers are values out of 100. So we will divide the rating by 100 and send it to Clipper. Create a class hexagon Clipper and extend this class with custom Clipper. Now, override the two methods of custom Clipper. Find the center. Again, same way to find it. Create a path object. We will have same angle multipliers so that each of our state is at same angle. To clip a path of polygon shape, we will add polygon to the path. Our first offset will be at 30 degrees similar to our base hexagon. But we will multiply radius with the first multiplier. This will correctly calculate the length as per the rating. For next stat, that is at 90 degrees, we will multiply radius with second multiplier and this goes on. Notice you need at least three points to form a closed path. You might have already noticed the difference that in Clipper, we have points to find and add them in the polygon path. Whereas in Painter, we needed to draw lines and needed two points to draw a single line. Continue this step for all the remaining points using for loop and you have the stats plotted on the hexagon. So now it's time to see the animation. For that, let's prepare our widget. First make hexagon widget a stateful widget. Then use the single ticker provider state mixin. Now let's declare animation controller and create six animation variables for each of the stat. In the init state function, we will first initialize the controller with vsync and a duration of two seconds. Then initialize the animations with tweens. The pace animation will start from 0.0, .0 and end at the pace state stat divided by 100. So for pace value 90, the animation will run from 0 to 0 0.9. Similarly, initialize remaining animations with respective stats. Let's get back to our clip path and wrap it with animated builder. The animation here will be our controller. So when we start the controller, the builder will rebuild the clip path. Instead of static value, we will now pass animation values. One last thing would be to start the animation. Since we want the animation to start as soon as you see the widget, we can run our animation in forward direction in its state function. So let's run it. And that's pretty good visual animated representation to show a player's stat. Next thing is pretty simple. We will add one more player data. So for that first, create another mock data, create six more animation values in similar fashion for second player. and duplicate the previous animated builder, but with a different data and colored box. And that is it. When you rerun the app, you can see the comparative stats. 
Did you like this video? Leave your comments in the comment section and let me know how did you feel about this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.